you are listening to Fantha Tracks. It's time to hit south with the Fanta from down under. Here's your host, Adam O'Brien. Welcome to the Panther from Down Under. Guys, welcome to episode number 66. Comes to you live from Plymouth, Stantino, the Gold Coast of Australia. The one, the only, the Panther, Adam O'Brien. And joining me all the way from the UK, Paul Nalsey, Naylor of Panther Tracks as well. So what would you like to see if they, you know, return to the movies, which are obviously their plan? I mean, they're talking yeah. about now the Marvel the Marvel guy, Kevin Feige's one's going to be the next one with Favreau as a director. Great, great to hear. You know, that's the rumour. Yeah. And and there's a spicy little rumour that Danny Jr. might be in it. I can't, you know, kind of, kind of see his nervous acting go, right, Jarvis, we're going to get a lightsaber and we're going <laughs> to see you. Okay. Like, he, I, I don't know if Star Wars is ready for Danny Jr., who I love. I love Danny. He's great. I, 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 I think it would be interesting. It would certainly be interesting. I mean, when they first started talking about the, um, was it Patty Jenkins, the the Rogue, the Rogue Squadron stuff? Oh, yeah. Talking yeah. About, I'd love to see something like that. Done right, I mean that would that could potentially be Top Gun in space, couldn't it? You know, so easy, so, easy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know whether I'd like any trilogies or anything at this stage. I, I think I'd probably just like some standalones, but I'd also like to see some crossover from TV into this into the movies as well, because I think that they've done such a good job. It would be respectful to see the likes of um, Mando turning up. You know, even if it's not a Mando film, as long as it's set in that timeline, let's see. Mm, that, like a yeah. tie-in or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Or it could even be set slightly before the original Mandalorian series, so we go back to that rusty knackered armor that he got when we first meet him. But yeah, yeah, as long as they handle it right, I don't care what they give us, but give us something because as much as much as the Star Wars TV content has been great, and let's face it, Disney Plus probably more than half of the people that sort of subscribe to that are there for Star Wars, and as good as the content is. Star Wars belongs on a big screen. It's an event. It should be something where you're looking forward to the premiere. You're looking forward to the uh, the magazines coming out. They're giving you hints of what's about to come. The trailer. Just the sitting in a cinema and seeing it as a group and soaking it up. We miss that at the moment. I don't know what time the show's drop for you over there, Adam, but like, ours drop at like 8 a.m., 9 a.m. in the morning. So you sat there. You probably just got out of bed. You sat there scratching your nuts, watching the, the, the latest episode of whatever, you know. And you're thinking, this isn't the way I'm supposed to be enjoying Star Wars. I used the word enjoying. I shouldn't have said enjoying while scratching nuts. No, but you... you <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? It's just, it's yeah, just yeah, a weird yeah. experience that you've got up and you're sort of bleary-eyed and you're sort of like, Oh, episode what? And then you know you're gonna have to, re- you know you're gonna have to rewatch it again later because you're not concentrated. Oh yeah, but, yeah, um, 100%. But yeah it's great. But having and they, said ca- that, they come out at midnight here actually, so it's it's a similar sort of time I suppose. You, you, you get around the same time as us, so we, we're getting in the morning as you're getting it there, bang on midnight. Um, I still think probably my favourite Star Wars moment, the one that certainly caught me off guard and made me really emotional was that scene where Luke Skywalker turns up in his X-Wing towards the end of, uh, was it season two of Mandalorian? Yeah, season two. Season two of Mando, yeah. 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 I mean, that was incredible. The quality of what they can do now with the the deep faking of of Mark Hamill as Luke Skywalker, that was decent. It wasn't perfect, but it was decent. But then by the time you got to those two incredible episodes in the Book of Boba Fett, where you'd got Luke training Grogu, that was amazing. You see him sat there meditating and you think, how good is this going to be? Fingers crossed, it's really good. And it was incredible, absolutely incredible. It was. We, we can thank the TV for saving Luke Skywalker. Episode 8 was, you know, really, to me, it was uh, two movies crammed together. I mean, yeah. Ryan tried to really finish things off. And, you know, to his credit, I'll give him this much, um, you know, contained in one movie, he, he probably resolved some stuff there, but left no... Room to scratch the nuts was um, JJ, and he, and he had to try and come up with something and pull the table out from under us yeah. with uh, with 
Palpatine and Pro Liam McDiamond's like, I'm strapped yeah. to a machine. What is going on here? I'm strapped to a machine. What do I do? But you're right. I, I, I forgot because episode episode eight ends as if it's the end of a trilogy. It, does it really end. does. Yeah, it's yeah. self-contained and done. Yeah, you know, it ties up. That's it. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> you're next. <laughs> yeah. Do you collect Star Wars uh, memorabilia or anything? I do. I do. You know, like I've, I've collected um, some of the lightsaber hilts and stuff like that, yeah. and and obviously I've gone nuts on um, to the point where you know I'm buying. Stuff that you don't even need, like the tops cards, you know, like little <laughs> trade cards. So I could quiz people. Uh, but, but yeah, yeah. I mean, every, everything that Star Wars is, it's, it's around. I've got a, the, the FET helmets here. I've got anything yeah. I can pick up. And I don't like picking up the ones you get in your little Zing Pop cultures here in Australia. Black Series. Oh, yes, yes. yes. Here is Jungle FET. You know, would you like it's Black Series? No, no. I want it on eBay and I want it to be part of the movies. So, of course, yeah. we all try and find all that sort of stuff. So the hilts and stuff, I've got the old ones from back in the old days, you know, nice. not this new stuff. Anyways, I want the real McCoy. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, yeah, I've got my Anakin one. I'm happy. It's the one I always dreamed of having. And, yeah. no, Ryan Johnson, he did not imagine having his old saber back at the end of that. That was a dream sequence. And, yeah. no, he's alive. Hi, this is Andy Seacombe, otherwise known as a what the? And you're listening to Fanta Tracks. I have got a lot of Black Series stuff. But I've sort of, in recent months, come away from that. And a bit like you, I'm keener to sort of have something a little bit more unusual. Yeah. So I've fallen down a bit of a deep, dark hole, which a lot of collectors out there might go sharp and take a breath. But you have to get these products to see the quality of them. It's customs that I've got got into. Imagine imagine if Kenner had 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 the guts uh, to have done it back in the day or been able to have... um, done another line of figures i mean the figures died out with that last 17 in 85 because mm-hmm. a lot of the kids of my generation that were the first ones to buy those figures like i said had moved yeah. on growing up we've retrofitted growing up now we've gone back to our childhood days um <laughs> but this this is a figure that could have been made and should have been made it is so true to that kenner look it is incredible yeah, so the five points articulation. Yeah, yeah, it's all, it's all, it's all moves. Everything, everything's cool. Wow. The guy that does this, so it's a company called Stan Solo. They, they they've done a number of weird and wacky things. So what they've done is they've taken the original R2 mold and they've created things such as, if you've been to conventions over the years, you may have seen this style. Oh, wow. So that's, yeah. that's the, it's like the Boba Fett version of, of, of an R2 unit. That's one that you would have seen on the Death Star, like a little. Black yeah, and see that. Yeah, and the third leg pulls out, so you can have it in the true Kenner style, like that, like the two-legged boot. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah. So that, they feel the same. They look the same. Everything about them is spot on. And there's a guy that does a lot of stuff on where he's reviewing these. His standout quote is: "The fans are doing the best things. And they really are." You get these through the post, and you go, "God, this is exciting." What have I got here? Wow. And all, as well as doing them loose, you can have them on card back. So let me just show you. Oh, ooh. now you got me excited. I won't get them all <laughs> down, but I've, I've got tons of these things there. He's even done Gorindon. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's, that's awesome. So that's it on card back, yeah. And the back of the card is just like a standard version of what you would have had with mm. the second series of stars. And he's done a, a Yavin version of C3PO. So it's just the silver oh, light. Look at that. Beautiful. They're just amazing, you know. Just take them for what they are. They're, they're all stamped appropriately on the leg as being SS, which is stamped solo. So there's no confusion in the collecting community. They're not done there to dupe anybody. It's just there for people yeah. who want something a bit different. I've got some R2 units as well on card, but that's got a translucent head as well, so that's, that's really cool. It's just nice to have. You know, it looks they, real. They just display well, yeah. But they are clearly marked up as being customs. So I was talking to you earlier about one of my favourite things in my collection. <laughs> it's literally a jar of sand. That could be from Bondi Beach, for all I know. But I, I, I'm legit- <laughs> <laughs> I have been told that that is legitimately from Lars Homestead, from the set of the original Star Wars. A colleague of mine from when I used to work in newspapers, she said, oh, I'm off out to Tunisia for a holiday. My boyfriend's booked us in to do this Star Wars tour. I said, right. I'm not holding you to this, but if you do manage to bring me something back from there, I'll love you for it. Back from there, all it is, I've thought nothing more of it. And she goes, close your eyes. I close my eyes. Just put that little jar <laughs> in my hands on it. That's incredible. That is just amazing. <laughs> so I've got a bit of tattooing on my desk. 
that was nice. Did you did you do that? Yeah, uh, the Anakin line to her. I don't like sand. It gets everywhere. <laughs> it gets everywhere. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Are you familiar with the Itty Bitties? Have you heard of those? I've heard the name, but yeah, tell us yeah. about them. So Itty Bitties, and these are something else that I quite like collecting. So they're, they're like little stuffed toys. So there's a Boba Fett. Oh, that's right. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. See those yeah. around the pop culture. Yeah. yeah. When you go to conventions, you'll get like um, special edition ones. So I've now got all four of the cantina creatures. So, yeah, so there's Hammerhead. Hammerhead on card back. Snaggletooth on his card back, which is oh, pretty look cool. look at that. There's Walrus Ooh. Man. Walrus Man, yeah. back. And our dear friend Greedo. Got to have Greedo, have so, Oh, poor old Greedo. So, but again, they just display nicely, and they're just so sort of evocative of the toys that we had as kids, paint, you know. But, yeah, the Black Series, a bit like you, I've got a bit bored with it. How many times are they going to repaint the same figure? <laughs> you know? or, or at least get the faces right. I mean, like, how many yeah. times Luke's go, or when they put Luke Ski Walker out, you know, like, <laughs> That was funny, wasn't it? And you know what? I even did a, a, a uh, you know, took a photo of it and I sent it to Hasbro. I said, guys, what, what's going on? How, how how does that actually leave there yeah. like yeah. that? And you kind of think they're just f***ing with us, aren't they? You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, it was wrong in about three parts of the card, but differently in three parts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, you, you, the, you the thing that bothers me big time about the Black Series yeah. is the fact that they've stopped having the window on the box. Because I tend to keep mine in the box if I can. Who wants to look at a, just a cardboard box without any indication of what's in there? Well, they're doing the can of card backs now too. Out here in Australia, we see them coming out with the Kenobi line and it's all being, you know, the, the card back versions of them. And, yeah, look, they, they look all right. But there's been a couple of funny looking Obi-Wans with Bung Eye. You know, kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he's, he's got one, the OBI one. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gold. oh it's absolutely gold. Yeah. But you kind of think uh, if if the collectors uh, and these custom designers are doing a better job, hire the damn guys, please. Yeah. Hasbro. Absolutely. Get, get them, to, you know, get them to come up with some ideas because, you know, if they're just yeah. sitting there on the line getting bored as hell. Go, no, buy it. There's so many other, you know, developers out there that are, are still in the same market as, as that Black Series. Huh? You've got NECA, yeah. which are doing massive lines of um, Fox properties right now, too. Everything to John yeah. Carpenter and Predator and Alien. And so, you know, like there's some people out there that could definitely do it. And Hasbro, you know, you kind of think that, you know, it's not the first time Lucasfilm have looked at other, you know, other developers yeah. for things, you know, yeah. uh, Dark Horse, yeah. <clears throat> Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I miss the expanded universe proper, you know, like when everything was yeah. trying to tie yourselves into it, you know. And it's here's a quote from uh, back when, you know, everything was happening. Uh, when it comes to canon, everyone went, oh, hey, it's all the same. It's all canon until it's overwritten in film. And it's something I think it was Paul Bateman said. Canon's only good until somebody overrides it. And he's right because, yeah. you know, there's always yeah. going to be a movie or a TV show where they go, that's a better idea. And let's yeah. overwrite something that's coming. Uh, Ahsoka, where the, the book yeah. was done. And then, of course, they overwrote it with a TV show or whatever it was. You know, like, you know, there's a story is what it is and it can be considered mythology or history or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, it only matters to, did you enjoy it. Exactly, exactly. I mean, I was I was saying this, and I've said it a couple of times to people, that one of the worst things is canon, because yes. if if you say something's canon, well, then you're saying that is it, you've got to deal with it. Before I was into Star Wars, I was massively into Spider-Man. So I buy Spider-Man Weekly. Now, I wasn't even yeah. thinking at that time in my life, so what's happened in that one is going to impact on the next story. It didn't even cross my mind. Looking Doctor Who, how many times the Daleks have come back after they've been defeated? I mean, <laughs> but if you killed somebody off in Star Wars and you regret it, how do you pull it back if you're saying that everything's canon? You can't do it. You can't, can't do it. it. No, no, that's yeah. right. I don't. I don't know. I, I have mixed feelings about whether they should repurpose Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, and Princess Leia together in that timeline using different actors. I've got no issues with Alden playing a young Han Solo. I thought he did a fantastic mm -hmm. job. He didn't copy the character. He, he he made it his own, but in a good way, in a belief, in, in a, I can but see that this would have been how Han Solo would have been. I, I don't know. If, if, they try, if, if ever they tried to remake A New Hope, I think that would be quite a sad day. Nature yeah. Hollywood I mean, you, reboots and, and sequels yeah. work because the property's already there. You know, yeah, it's, natural thing. Yeah. it's lazy. It's lazy. I mean, you're obviously a very big June fan, yeah. 
So how did you feel about that being remade? When I look at it, the book for me is what it is. You know, the book yeah. is always going to be, because it's something I, like Lord of the Rings, I read it once a year, and it's it's such a part of my life. I, there's life lessons in that novel, you know, so that's, yeah. I, that's the kind of level that I see Dune as, you know, and, yeah. and I can see why Dune was copied a number of times, whether it's from George, you know, Moisture Evaporators. He also <laughs> had the... The, the 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 dragons in the in you know in the desert and I'm kind of like the sandworms yes George yes the yeah. sand people Fremen you know like so there's all these different parts <laughs> which and even like Luke Skywalker to a certain point or even more so Vader is very much Paul Atreides becomes the emperor of the yeah. known universe and he also becomes literally a person who wipes out millions if not billions of people so he becomes the bad guy. What does Anakin become? Comes the bad guy. Anyway, you know, June has that sort of thing. So for me, when they were talking about remakes of, of the original film, we're kind of like, yeah, no, give it a go. I only wanted to see somehow what Frank really put on the page, put out there. And, you, you know, it's a two hundred to 300,000 word novel. That's huge. So to see that yeah. truncated down into what it is, and hopefully this is the next movie as well. For everything in one location, daily news, reviews, interviews, podcasts, video and social media feeds, bookmark fathatracks.com for Star Wars news 24-7, 365. Star Wars borrowed massively from Kurosawa and, and, and all oh, those yeah. early sort of Japanese fantastic films. You've made me think about the Acolyte as well, because obviously that's set many oh, hundreds yeah. of years before what we're familiar with. Going back to 98, before The Phantom Menace came out, we were sort of being expected to sort of transport our minds back 32 years prior to Star Wars. That seemed a stretch. But to like cast it sort of hundreds of years back, where potentially oh, yeah, the only characters that we're likely to see younger versions of are Yoda and maybe Maz Kanata, you know, that will be our connection to what we know as Star Wars. But that, that'll be interesting to see. I think the Ahsoka series has got potential because that looks as if it's going to be bringing all of the Rebels crew back together. What's the other one? So you got that and then, oh, oh yeah, Kenobi. So Kenobi actually hinted at a few characters that are alive at the yeah. time. Oh, Master Voss made it out, you know, and then straight away you go, dude, Kenobi, dude, what are you doing here? Yeah, I'm getting these guys out, yeah, push the Empire, dude. Let's get out there. Grab those sabers. Yeah. You know, and that's how they played this guy, you know. And George, George just put in a Phantom Menace for five seconds, a dude having a coffee and a, a biscuit on the set. Let's put a little bit of eyeliner around here. Yeah. Yeah. That's let's, make more, yeah. let's make him more like Adamant. <laughs> uh, yeah. I, 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 I went to an 80s music festival the other year when he was the headline act. It was a choice between staying and watching him or catching the last train home. So anyway, I arrived back at the station on time, and <laughs> <laughs> seriously, he played the first song, and it was like, "Oh my goodness, this is not yeah, yeah, yeah. this, this ain't happening." This ain't <laughs> so yeah, so we, got, we, we got out of there. We got out of there before I was born. My mum and dad had the opportunity to emigrate to Australia. Um, a couple of their friends did. My mum and dad were due to go with them, but my grandma who i never knew um fell ill and uh, that stopped that from happening so my mom and dad didn't go but their friends who have popped over to the uk probably seven or eight times over the years and you know, i communicate with on facebook they, they say that they say nobody watches neighbors nobody watches no, no. we're not interested no, we'd rather watch red dwarf because we're a bunch of smegheads <laughs> I've, I've met all of them as well i've met all of them yeah, they're great yeah, yeah they're yeah. funny lot aren't they yeah, yeah. Love it. I mean, we do watch Doctor Who, I'll give you that, but I only watch Tom Baker reruns and people are jumping over the top of Tom Baker go, this is Tom Baker. <laughs> he did the, the biggest marketing campaign for Jelly Babies ever, didn't he, in that program? So, oh, yeah. mate, he's, he's gold. I always thought, you know, like he could have gone hard edge and become like a British gangster action star. Like there's yeah. something, he's a big, burly guy who goes, right, I'm Tom Baker, I'm going to be the transporter. Now, they, you know, like, <laughs> just imagine him. <laughs> <laughs> he's got that wild, wild look in his eyes, doesn't he? So that was brilliant. That episode, that, that special that they did a few years back, where they brought him back, he was like curating in a museum, and he, he goes, "Who knows? Who knows?" And he thinks, <laughs> "Oh yeah, that's just brilliant." And he just brought you back just for that. That's cool. What's that episode he did in Never Ed? It's called Shader or Shader or something like that. I, I can't remember. It was one that was it was filmed. They did part of, and then they they just basically never went back to it, right? And it was one oh, of the right. ones that 
Falcons wrote, right? And so, yeah. you know, I'm a big Chargers fan. That's one thing they did right, folks. Let me tell you yeah. that. Don't panic and break the towel. Uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> what's cold is, and and then uh, I remember a couple of years later, I was I was asked on a Doctor Who show over um, your way, and they said, actually, funnily enough, Ben Brummy, there you go, there you yeah. go, and, and they say, well, hey, come on and have it. Tell us about what's like in Australia, you know the, you know, and I said, yep, yeah, no dramas. And I told them, you know, it basically it was a huge thing. It was on five o'clock every afternoon on the ABC, our version of the BBC. And yeah. so, yeah, we were watching it, and um, this thing came on, and it cut off like 10 minutes early. It was shatter. I kept calling it shatter because that's what we call it out here in Australia. And everyone's going, what's she talking about? What is that she da? Then a shatter. And I go, what's, what's she just Australian talking about? Shatter. Shatter. <laughs> <laughs> Just love it. And then apparently Tom Baker got wind. It's a, well, there you go. Not wind you're thinking of. <laughs> That's probably why he was only that special for a bit. They couldn't have him near the mic. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you got that sort of wind, Tom, you get back. Oh, you got to love it. Oh, t- talk about a, a deep dive, folks, tonight here on the Phantom from Down Under. We've really like dived right into Star Wars <laughs> lore. And, you know, you just don't know where you're going to go because it zigs and zags. It, it really has tonight, hasn't it? It's, it's, been, it's been the best therapy counsellor that, that I've ever had. <laughs> Hi, this is Julie Dolan, the voice of Princess Leia, and you're listening to Phantatrax. It's your only hope. Oh, you got to let the, the folks know where they can find you online because I tell you what, if this is the kind of conversation yeah. that you're going to be having, they want to have it with you. <laughs> we'll catch up again soon anyway. But, uh, uh, we will, we will. Uh, yeah, you can get me through Fantatrax. Uh, if you just stick Fantatrax into Google or whatever search engine you're using, you'll find us. Uh, we do um, we do convention reviews. Um, I've got my own podcast that I do with Mark Newbold called uh, Start Your Engines. And that's based on the ships and various vehicles of Star Wars. And the next one that we're doing is Boba Fett's Starship. No, I'm only kidding. It's Slave One. Uh, <laughs> damn right. Damn right it is. <laughs> what, what we do with that is Mark has all the technical shizzle, and I sit there going, oh, really? I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> he, he makes it sound like he knows everything, and I make it sound like I know zip. And, and it works. <laughs> Absolute goal. And it, it, it to say, folks, over there, that's a hell of a, a place to go and check out not only Star Wars news, but lots of Star Wars stuff in all the areas, you know. Obviously, yeah. we've got podcasts that we're doing now. We've got, obviously, uh, Making Tracks, which looks yeah. like pretty much, you know, the, the runabout with the, the two Marks, Mark Mulcaster and, of course, Mark Newbold. Yeah. We've got, so we've got Brian Cameron looking after anything to do with literature, and he's also the host of Good Morning Tatooine. Now, that airs at around 9 p.m. UK time on a Sunday, so about eight and a half hours from now. So you guys will probably all be tucked up in bed or about to get up and have your Cocoa Pops. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you get ch- if you ever get a chance to see that, you can watch it on Catch Up anyway. So uh, as soon as it's aired live, you can get it on Catch Up. I think I've, I've seen you drop in there once, once or twice, Adam. And oh, I have stuff. a number of times. I went, get yeah, out yeah. Oh, mate, hey, gown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I can't get this, this damn thing to work here, so I'm doing it on my phone. And when you're doing it on your phone, you, you, don't, you don't get to see any of the messages. No, you don't. Yeah, yeah, that's so, right. So don't, don't, don't ever think that I'm ignoring you, mate. It's probably that I'm doing it on my phone, trying to go like this one. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then the other Phantom Tracks show that's a really good one is the music one, which um, I'm sure you've spoken to Darth Elvis. There's a planet discs. Yes. Yeah, the planet discs is fantastic. And that does do some deep cuts. But, yeah, that's always worth a listen. But, uh, yeah, no, it's great to be part of it. It's given me the opportunity to meet a bunch of fantastic, like-minded people. You know, when you meet fans of, of something that you're really passionate about, they're more into it than you are, and you think, okay. Mm. <laughs> They really do. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> the, some of these people they, they know way too much um but, <laughs> but no it's been good but it's, it's also been it's been good to experience star wars in a way that I, I otherwise wouldn't have done i've got to go to events and um managed to blag my way into um the panels at star wars celebration that i probably shouldn't have been in but it doesn't matter <laughs> <it's all good. laughs> but uh, yeah no i love it i do love it 
Well, I've got to say, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you, but I'll also put an invitation out to you to come on, of course, the Lethal Mullet Network. Well, we just covered, what was it, uh, not too long ago, Wild Hearts from over your way, and I'll tell you what, that's a hell of a band. Yeah, Mark, Mark Newbold's a huge fan of the Wild Hearts. Are, are you familiar with the band Ash that are playing Hashtag Oh, I know Hunting? Ash, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've seen them live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you want to talk about Ash anytime, I'm your man. Pick an artist and we'll go for it. <laughs> oh, we love it. Like, you know, I'm yeah. currently covering uh, the Highlander franchise on that, that network. So, folks, you've heard it here. Panther from Down Under. Go and check it out. Of course, at PantherTracks.com, SoundCloud, wherever a good podcast to be shown. And we'll catch you next time. Next month, ciao for now. So long. Yeah. And thanks for all the fish. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't panic now. Well, that's all we have time for here tonight on the Panther from Down Under. And we'll catch you next time, same place, same channel, and of course, with more Star Wars news in a single file from Fanthatracks.com's Australian edition. That's right, we'll catch you next time. So, until then, may the Force be with you, and enjoy your Star Wars fandom. We'll see you next time. Warning, no Tauntauns were harmed in the filming and recording of this podcast. <laughs> Coming up next on Fanta Tracks Radio, it's Desert Planet Discs.